Hey guys, happy Saturday. Thanks for coming in tonight. Hello, replay viewers. Thanks for watching. And hi, YouTube viewers. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to participate in the chat down here live every night, you can join me on Periscope. Just download the app to your phone and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So guys, I see you popping in. Do you remember this one? <laughs> This is block 25. So we have we're block we're going to be on block 57 tomorrow. So that's how far this block is behind. And um I'll, I'll flip you around and we'll get started. Hey guys, happy Saturday. Thanks for coming in tonight here. So all right. Oops, I got pieces falling out everywhere. So this is block 25 of the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. It's that cute little bunny applique. Uh, this has been in my unfinished blocks pile forever. I think the longest. I think this is my oldest unfinished block so far. I have about 13 unfinished blocks for the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. And uh, you know, I was, I was not planning. We have a free day tonight. So we finished our block early yesterday. And uh, we have a free day to kind of work on whatever we want tonight. And I was paging through the blocks and I wasn't planning on doing this one, but then it popped out. It, I think it's perfect for my mood tonight. And uh, uh, I just couldn't stand looking at it unfinished anymore. So we probably won't finish it tonight, but we'll get a good chunk of it done. It, it'll at least make me feel like I'm working on this block again. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a Fabric Designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get going. Okay. Here is my little bunny. So this is kind of interesting in the sense Oh, I know, I, I noticed that the new block is up, but I, I decided, eh, I'll just wait till tomorrow, uh, just because um, not everyone's gonna realize that it's up. So we get new blocks for this every Thursday and Sunday, and they released it a little early uh, tonight. So, uh, but, you know, I thought about maybe printing that out and working on that, but not everyone, I think, will know that it's up tonight. So I thought I'd give, you know, the people give some people the opportunity to um, work on it uh, with me here tomorrow instead of me working on it tonight and then not knowing that I'm working on it tonight. So I thought I'd still let it be a free day. And um, so I'm doing the bunny. So this is this is interesting from the standpoint that, oh, thanks, little bun bun. Um, it's a little different. This isn't going to be needle turn applique as well. So here's where I'm at. None of the pieces are sewn on at all. But I do have my drawing of it on there with uh, my water soluble marker. So this is interesting uh, as far as the needle turn because we've been working on that other block uh, that's needle turn applique. I think I can show you that one here. So this one's unfinished too, but we've been doing this one needle turn. But if you remember, if you've been watching that block, we are not turning the, the seams the seam allowances beforehand. This one we're turning them beforehand. So, and what we did for that is I, we made uh, these little templates out of a double layer. Actually, this might be a triple layer. I think this is actually a double layer of uh, freezer paper. So it's nice and thick. And since it's freezer paper, the shiny side of freezer paper, uh, when you iron it onto it, your, uh, um, your fabric kind of sticks to it temporarily. So what we did is we, I think we, um, we ironed, this is the shiny side, the side that sticks to the fabric. We, we pressed that onto our fabric and then we, with some really strong starch, starched the edges, just went over the edge and we had one of those tiny little irons and we pressed and starched and pressed all the way around. And we, when we were done, we just pulled that piece that we um, fused to it, but it, it, it's temporary. So we were able to just pull that right off. So this is highly, highly starched right now. Like if, if we got this wet, it would all fall apart and I'd have to start over on, on this piece. 
Uh, so this is a different way of needle turn where you're kind of, it's kind of a reverse direction. So we're doing the needle turn first and then stitching it on instead of actually turning the fabric with our needle as we stitch, which is the more traditional way of doing it. This is just kind of like an interesting, fancy way. So we did all of these freezer paper things first. So all my pieces are ready to go, which at this point makes it really easy. It took a while to get to this point with all of the, the freezer paper bits, but now we're at the point where we can just chill and stitch these guys on. And you know what? That's what today calls for for me. Um, I, I was, uh, this was a weird day for me. I don't know how your guys' Saturday was, but I, I don't know. I must have been going to bed too late for the past week. Like, I've been helping uh, my husband with some of his stuff, and he's, he's way better at staying up late than me uh, nowadays. And so I was up, like, way later than usual. And I think it just caught up with me. I napped. I basically napped and ate today. Like, I... I I got up early again to read my my book, which I do in the mornings, but then I was so tired that I couldn't get going on my stuff right away. So, um, well, I made breakfast and then I tried to work, which just didn't work at all. I ended up just looking at Facebook and couldn't move basically. So work didn't work. And I took a nap on the couch. Uh, I think my husband was tired too. He was watching a movie. So I just watched the movie with him and, um, fell asleep on the couch, and then we ate lunch, and then I fell asleep again later, and it was just, and I, I don't usually do that, so that was really odd for me, and I, you know, I was napping this evening too, so I actually just kind of woke up for this, again, which is really odd for me, I'm not much of a napper, so it was just weird, uh, and uh, this felt like it would take the least amount of thinking and it would be more chill and uh, all I have to do is follow my outline and stitch things on. I thought, and you know with needle turn you get that really relaxing feeling when you stitch. So I'm like, you know what? I'm doing this bunny. And I wasn't going to do the bunny. I was going to do, I was actually going to do that B, that uh, English paper piece B. Yeah, probably from working on the basement. Yeah. You know, I haven't, that, I only worked on the basement that one evening. <laughs> So I have to get back at it. Actually, you know, we were outside a lot yesterday. Um, we harvested a bunch of the garden, so that was more outside time than I probably had in a little while, too. So I don't know. And I just finished a kind of a big project. I actually have to do revisions on the project tomorrow. That's what I was going to do this weekend. Uh, but, you know, after big projects, my body kind of shuts down a little bit, too. So I think that was part of it. But man, it... You know what? I should probably baste this. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just hold it here. Let's see if I can do this without basting it. I have the lines that I can follow, so that's gonna help me a little bit. I probably should baste it, but you know what? I'm gonna just throw a pin on there. Let's see how that works. I don't really want to do a pin. There, there's applique pins that are really small. I could glue, I'm, I'm, I don't really want to glue because I don't want to have it have like that stick down look. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to just pin this edge up here. And then I'll, I'll remove this once I get further there. We'll, we'll just see how this goes. If I stab myself too many times, then I'll just take it out. But yeah, so this just seemed like it would fit the bill for the evening. Yeah, with applique pins, they're actually only about this long. They're teeny tiny pins. So, like, this is going to get in my way here. But uh, applique pins, I don't think it would. So anyway, I hope your guys' Saturdays were a bit more productive than mine. But, oh, uh, well. It's good to have a day like that every once in a while, I think. All right, I think I, I made this kind of too long. I'm going to shorten the length of my thread a little bit here. There we go. I did go for a walk this evening, though, so that was kind of nice. Yeah. You know what? I think I'll be recovered enough for tomorrow, which will be good, because... 
I want to get a. What I'm doing is I um, I turned in my designs for my next fabric collection, and they came back with some feedback. So I just wanted to make those designs quick uh, before, um, you know, I wanted to hand them off again on Monday. So that was what my weekend was going to be, but I didn't work on it uh, today. So I don't know if I'll get done with it. I am. I don't know what size needle this is. It's just a sh a, a plain sewing needle. It's a sharps. Um, and uh, just a normal sharp. It's got a sharp tip. It's not a blunt tip, uh, and it has a smaller eye uh, compared to my embroidery needles because I don't need a huge eye. And it's also kind of thin compared to my embroidery needles that I usually use. Uh, but it's not flexible. You don't. I don't think you want a flexible, flexible needle. But I'm just kind of using what I got here. I, I've heard that sometimes for needle applique you want a little longer needle, but I don't know, mine's pretty short. This is what I use for uh, quilt, using, um, binding my quilts and stuff too. I think, I think you just don't want bendy, and you for sure don't want a blunt tip. That's gonna be really difficult. And uh, blunt tips, you, you usually find those, or at least I, you know, when, I, when people talk to me about it, uh, the people who usually have these blunt tip needles are people who do a lot of cross stitch. Because cross stitch, you want a blunted, pointed, a blunt point needle, so you don't pierce your fabric. Because usually you're using that that eight of cloth that has like all those squares like built in, and you don't want to pierce through that. You just want the blunt tip so you can go in the the specified holes. And that would that would be rough because you wouldn't be able to get through. Um, you wouldn't be able to get through this fabric with a blunt needle without it being really annoying. Let's see if I'm in focus there. So I already feel good about <laughs> choosing this project. You know, this I, I've been saying this about needle turn applique. It's something that I didn't realize before I did needle turn applique. Um, but I realized it with block number one that, oh wow, this is just super relaxing. It has that same feel. And I hadn't felt this with any other quilting before. But it has that same feel to me as knitting and crochet where your brain can just completely kind of shut down and uh, kind of reboot itself really. And it's just that, I'm going to do another stitch on the corner here, uh, it's just that monotonous uh, motion and it's even better with this type of needle turn where we've turned it already because I don't even have to worry about turning it. I am just stitching it on. and. <laughs> After today, when I when I looked in my bin and I saw how unfinished this one was, you know, so I have that, and, and just how easy, how relaxing it was going to be to work on, because all I would have to do is stitch. That was like the perfect combo for me today, because I didn't get anything accomplished today, and this would at least make me feel like I got something accomplished that has been sitting around on the wings forever, you know what I mean? I mean, this is block 25, that was a long time ago. And it would fit my mood, which is something easy that won't use my brain. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly. Needle turn is perfect for a movie um, or TV. That sort of thing. So this, this the bunny just jumped out at me today. You know what? I I'm kind of liking this technique of needle turn as well, where you do it beforehand. I this is the only time I've ever done that. I would love to try it again. I remember when we were doing it though, it was it was annoying using that little tiny iron. I kept burning myself. So uh, we used that clover iron that had the ironing tip that was about this big. And you know, it, I mean, that worked way better than what a large iron would, would do. But I think that was my first time using it and I kept, kept burning myself. But I think I would uh, try this technique again. So if there's another, if there's another applique coming up, and um, yeah, exactly. If there's another applique coming up that just seems like it should be needle turn, and it seems like this technique with the double freezer paper, like again, we we did the the double freezer paper thing. I think I'd have to look up the instructions again. Well, I, I have them in here. I, I printed it out. But um, I'd be willing to give that a try again because 
I do really, really love the look of needle tearing. I think I'm going to get rid of this pin now. We got half of it stitched on. I suppose next time it wouldn't hurt to just put a few basting stitches in. But I'd be willing to try this again if I um, tried this technique on another needle turn if it seems like it would work. If the pieces seem weird and it'd be difficult to do this little fold over thing, then I don't know, but... But it worked um, kind of fun. Yeah, this is Block 25. I'm pretty sure I have that one up. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm gradually putting on my older videos, so I'm not quite sure where I left off. I will use a mini travel iron. Well, the nice thing about the clover iron is that you can really isolate where you're, like, you can just use just the tiny little point of, of the clover iron. The dumb thing about it is the design of the handle, because it's the handle where you burn yourself on it. It's just, I don't, I don't quite understand it. Like, it just seems like such an easy thing to fix design-wise, and they just haven't done it. It's like this open rod, and they have a little protector around this this rod that's just a metal heated rod. Like, it's part of the iron. It's as hot as the iron is. And you can't hold this protector of it, but it looks, balance-wise, that's where it looks like you're supposed to hold it. So you inevitably start holding it there, and then you burn yourself up. It's just, it's the design of the iron is not great. But it is cool to be able to work with that tiny little pointed bit of the iron. I just don't know why they don't figure out the rest of it. it seems silly. Alright, this is that point, so I'm going to add another little stitch to it. Just to really lock in that point. And uh, we're home free, just the, the last uh, straightaway here. So this is definitely awesome, this, this uh, with the freezer paper, once you get to this point, like I feel like it took a lot, like a long time to get this far on it. I think I got a little knot in here. There we go. Like to to prep the pieces. I mean, that was a lot of cutting out and pressing and all that, and uh, to do the whole starch and fold over and press thing. I mean, that took a long time. I got a little thread here. Let's pop that under. But now that all the pieces are prepped, this is a nice place to be, where, where all they're all prepped. I don't have to worry about the whole folding under and getting that all perfect, uh, like what we were with block um, 55 that I showed you uh, a few minutes ago. Even though that way is more traditional. So I do still like doing it that way, just for the sake of that I know that, oh, hey, this is how it was done for real where you just cut your pieces, base them on, and turn the edge as you go. But I do have to say that this is pretty slick at this point, just to be able to stitch this on. And it's exactly the same thing. I mean, it might as well be us turning it as we go, you know? That's all it is. We just starch down the little seam. I mean, it's not being held down with glue or anything else or um, fusible or anything. Still just fabric and a little starch. All right, we're almost around here. I clearly made my thread way too long. We'll get a, a couple of the other underneath shapes. I don't think I have my threads long enough to go around one of these big leaves, but I can start putting in like the back of the ear, or the, the second ear, and, and all those things that have to go behind other things. Alright, and I'm just going to go to the back and tie this off. Yay! I'm making something with this guy! Ah, there, I feel good. <laughs> my binder for an awfully long time and now there's actually something stitched down <laughs> yeah i'm i'm kind of curious about that too um 
I mean, that one, yeah, definitely has a whole pile of less prep. I have a hunch that if you were, if you got really the hang of needle turn and just really got going, that that way would be faster still. But I don't know, maybe not. You can just stitch to stitch stitch on this pretty quickly without that extra step of turning the needle, turning the um, seam allowance around with the needle. I suppose it depends on how many pieces you do too. Like if we had done this with the um, heart block, that big one at the beginning where it was just that one piece, I'm gonna just tie my knot again. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna, you know what, I think some of these little pieces I don't think I'm gonna need to baste, so I'm just gonna tie my knot and get going. I can't do that thing really well where you twist a few times and then make your knot, I'm not very good at that. Where you just twist and then, I don't know. I'll have to figure out how to do that someday. Oops, I think I just about pulled this out. Did you trace the design on freezer paper for 55 and then trace around that? No, so we didn't, for 55, we didn't have freezer paper at all. We did not do this step. For 55, all we did was draw our line on and then cut it out. So we just traced our shape directly to the fabric and all we we're dealing with is a piece of fabric and we're tilting it under. So this does have all this extra stuff, which was, it was, it was a lot. I mean, it was cumbersome. It was uh, cumbersome to make these two pieces and then do all that little fold over, like little surgery almost of all these little pieces and uh, the starch. I mean, we had to paint on the starch and then fold it over and press and then paint on more starch. And I mean, like it was a long process, especially since we have like, I don't know, 10, 11 pieces to do it with. So it was a lot of prep. But I think it was a lot of prep because there was so many pieces. I was going to ask you how to tie those knots. I suck at it too. Um, it's something about just twisting and pulling. Let's just try that. I'll try just twisting and pulling next time and, and see if that that works. But that was something I never quite understood. But see, you can see, you can get that needle turn effect here. Do you, do you see it where it, the fabric just is poofed up? It feels like it's raised off the surface of the fabric, the background fabric. And that's, to me, what needle turn is. I mean, it's just... So cute. I, I just kind of love it. So, all right, let's, let's choose where to go next. I think I'm going to try and get some of these teeny pieces out of the way. So we have the back hand here and we have the ear. I'm going to try and do the ear. Yeah, this here. So I probably don't have to stitch all the way down. I can just start here because this is going to be covered up by other stuff. So this is going to be covered up by our bunny body. So it'll be, it'll be like that. So this will be a good piece to get out of the way here. And then I, I want to do these, these leaves and then eventually we'll have to get to this, uh, this part here. You know what? I'm always messing up this shape. I think, I wonder if I'm missing a shape here. Hold on a sec. I think this is the, this is there, then we have the inside foot. Okay, and then here's the hands. Some of these pieces are just a little goofy. Oh wait, but then what about this hand? Eh, we may have a piece hiding somewhere. There we go. Here, this is something. I'm not wrapping around the thread, put the needle and pull away. Do you use a hoop? Um, it's the let go of the wraps. Trick is not to let go of the wraps when you do it. Um, I think this goes here, and I think this is here. All right, I'm gonna have to keep these together. But we can do some of those. Uh, let's see, what was the question? Oh, why not use a hoop? Um, I suppose you could. I don't think you really need to, though. Uh, I think uh, you wouldn't, I don't think you would for, I'm, I'm gonna use the pin again. I mean, you could use a hoop, I suppose, but I don't, I don't think you really need it um, as long as your, your, your bits are basted on. I suppose it would leave the whole thing a little bit flatter while you work on it. Oops, that knot was not big enough. Let's, let's try that thing now. So, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do that. 
All right, so I'm just kind of twisting. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to watch a YouTube video on how to do that little twisty twist thing. And now I can't even do this. All right, I think we'll just work with it not that size. I think for needle turn applique where you are dealing with the, the needle turn part, I think maybe it would be a little weird with a hoop, but I guess, you know, this is, I haven't done many needle turns. So my first needle turn was on block number one. And uh, technically my second needle turn was block 55. I mean, this is needle turn, but this is the first time I'm actually stitching. But I think if I would have basted this down, like let's just move him out of the way, this wall. This would just be held in place just fine. I don't know. I'll have to look it up with the hoop. Yeah, hoops, I mean, that's what I use hoops for, is for embroidery. But I don't know, I think, I think it's nice to feel this. Oh, you know what? Here's a reason that you probably would not want to use a hoop. Because when I'm doing this stitch, like I'm, I'm on the, the ear side right now. Oh, here, let's get in focus. And I'm going directly across into the background fabric, but then I'm angling up right away and coming back in to the ear fabric. And that angle might be a little difficult if you're in a hoop, I'm thinking. So I don't know if this stitching without the hoop, just for that stitch in particular, uh, might be a reason not to not use a hoop. I don't know, I'm sure in the end it's personal preference and what works best for you. But I, I'd be, um, I would give that a try, maybe, the, with the hoop, just see what it feels like. All right, enough of that guy. Sometimes it's not, I mean, sometimes it's nice not having a hoop. Like this feels like it's just me and the needle and thread and fabric and I can go anywhere. Like I could fold this up into a little baggie and throw it in my bag and I, even the hoop seems like extra equipment, you know what I mean? So I think that's kind of one of the pleasures of needle turn is that it's just so limited in what you need. How do you fold under the edges? So this is a different technique. We use this for, this is block 25. I'm just kind of picking it up. Um, block 25 was ages ago. Uh, so this was a technique that was recommended by the designer of this block where we made freezer paper bits first of all the design of all the pieces. And then we, with very heavy starch, uh, starched and pressed over the edges onto the freezer paper. It was kind of a process and that's why I don't have anything stitched down yet uh, because I, we only, it took like the whole three or four days just to get all these pieces prepped. But now that they're prepped it's awesome. Like this is really easy work at this point without having to tuck them under. So I would, uh, if you go to Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube and just look around until you find block 25. I mean, that would have been somewhere between February and now. <laughs> um, probably smack dab in the middle. So what would that be? Um, I don't know, probably April-ish, May-ish. Then uh, um, we go through the whole process there. But it's like a double layer of freezer paper and there was something special I remember of, you know, whether it was reversed or not reversed and I don't know. It was definitely a process I've never done before and it, 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 there was a lot, it was simple. I mean, it was simple, but there was lots of little bits to it. And this is where I went out and I purchased that small clover iron that I got, I burnt myself a few times on. But, you know, like I said, right now it's kind of paying off because this is awesome and easy to have all these edges tucked under. So all the, all that's holding these under is a whole pile of starch. So like, here's what the, here's what the back of this one looks at. Like, so it's just, if we got this wet, I was saying this earlier, but if we got this wet, it would all 
unravel. Like this, this um, perfect edge would go away. It would just unfold itself, which is uh, what it did when we did that on accident, I think, on this block too. Then we're like, oh, I guess that doesn't work. I think that was this block. All right, so I'm going to just end it here because all this is covered up. So you cut it and then starched and ironed. Um, I, we made these first. This is a double layer, so we had to do a double layer of that. And um, I know I'm really excited to have this guy finish. I think he's super cute, too. This is the first time that I used the cat fabric, too. So we have a we have the, the cat bunny. Cat bunny. But, uh... So we made a double layer of freezer paper, and with freezer paper, one side is feels like paper and the one other side is shiny. The shiny part sticks to stuff when you, when you iron it, temporarily. So uh, we fuse the two pieces together just to make a thicker piece. No, the shiny sides aren't together. One is, this is the paper side and this is the shiny side. So the shiny side, we pressed onto a piece of fabric. So that would make the, the piece of freezer paper stick to the fabric. So at this point, we're stuck in a fabric. Then we cut around our seam allowance, I think. And then while it's still stuck to here, and since it's a double layer, it, it wasn't as floppy, but then we would, like, I think I had a little like I had a Q-tip or a paintbrush or something, just a little something to dab the starch on. Like I was dipping it in the starch and then dabbing on and then folding it over and ironing and then dabbing the next little bit on on the seam allowance, folding over and ironing. Like it was a, it was a whole deal to do that. It, it took a while. But um, yeah, I mean, and it took a long time. We had a lot of pieces here and... Um, You know, I, I never got to the stitching part because that part took too long, or it took so long. I know, well, it was forever ago, like it was months ago. Scissors, here we go. Alright, I think there's a couple other little pieces that are behind other things, like this hand here. Actually, just this hand here is it, because there's two pieces down here, oh, I don't know if you guys can tell. But there's the tail and the back foot, but we need to get the, the ground on before we can do that. So let's, I believe this is the hand. It's itty bitty 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 piece. So this is the back hand right here, I think. It will work. So I'm just gonna, I don't think I need to base that on either. So I'll do that guy, and then I think I'll do these other two, um, two leaves. And then the next bit is to get the ground on. I'm not sure if we'll get all that done tonight, but I do feel really good about, um, oh, hey, Carol. I, I uh, do feel good about getting something stitched down on this. Like I said, I didn't have anything stitched on this, and when I open it up tonight, I'm like, oh my god, I need to work on that. So I feel like I get something accomplished today. <laughs> Hold him down there. Oh, you know what? I'll be stitching the wrong direction if I start on that side. I kind of, I'm going counterclockwise with my, my stitches. Oops, dang it, lost my thread. All that set up and then lost. Uh, just because I'm stitching, I'm just, uh, then I can stitch, well, I don't know. I guess because that I'm holding, I'm, I'm right-handed, I think, is probably the best, the best uh, reason. Um, because I, um, I'll, I'll show you with, with the stitches once I get this one started. because I'm stitching um, right to left, so 
that ends up being counterclockwise. Um, but I'll show you why. So you do, you have your stitch. This is a little far in, but that's okay. It's going to be covered up by, by more stuff. So like I'm, I'm ending the first stitch and starting the next stitch in the same motion. So I'm going down into the background fabric and then coming back up a stitch length away into the bunny fabric. So that motion, you know, that'd be hard. Like I'd have to go this way with, with, um, you know, if I was left-handed, I would go the other way because it's just the way it would be easier. Um, you know, yeah, I would have to stitch, you know, in this direction if I was going, uh, clockwise. So this is just, I think it's just purely a right-handed, it's just easier if you're right-handed. But yeah, I would go the other direction for sure if I was left-handed, I think. It's just the direction you're comfortable making, like, a forward stitch. Because we are, we are doing that motion a stitch length away, uh, with each, each stitch. Ah, oh, this makes me feel good, getting, getting bunny pieces stitched down. You know, I do have a block that's not even started yet. Uh, it was when, when we were on, uh, our New York vacation. That's so south block, and I actually think that one won't take very long, but that's, that's that English paper piece one, uh, with the hexagons, but the bigger hexagons, not that teeny tiny hexagon one which is also unfinished. But I was going to do the B today, uh, that English paper piece B, because I'm, I was already feeling like, oh, let's do something that's just handwork. I don't want to get the machine out and, and all that. And I thought, you know what, that one will be fun to work on some more. But then when I opened up the binder and saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is even more just mind, um, relaxing. So I'm like, you know what, this is the totally the most relaxing one I could work on and the one that would make me feel like I made the most progress since it's been um, so long for this one. So it won. I was not not expecting to work on it tonight, but I'm really, really happy I am. Yeah, the B one, I, I think I'm in a pretty good place with that one. I, I almost have all the stripes on and uh, we, we did that thing where we adjusted the stripes a hair as we went, just we just really trimmed them a little bit, a hair thinner, because they were getting kind of wider and, and wider. Um, but then we started gluing down the pieces, and that seemed to help a ton. Um, and you know, I mean, you can see some of that in the videos for that one, for the, the latest video I have for that one. I think that's block 51 or 52. But that, that was helpful, trimming those stripes, the B stripes, just a, a hair to the inside of the line, and then gluing them down before we folded the edges over. That seemed to help a lot to keep it in, in proportion. But yeah, I feel like we're in a good place on that one. That's why I thought I'd work on that one, because it'd get a little bit farther. I, I don't think we would have finished that one yet. This fabric, <laughs> I like this fabric. I printed this, this is printed at Spoonflower. This is uh, before, I printed this before I ever did any fabric, any of my fabric collections before. This was kind of, um, when I started, when I started making my embroidery patterns, I, um, I made my animal embroidery patterns into a quilt and I decided, okay, if I'm going to make this into a quilt, I want to do my own fabric. And it was right when kind of Spoonflower, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Spoonflower. If not, you should go to spoonflower.com. You can um, print your own fabric there, just a couple of yards even, or you could just print like a fat quarter or even a sample that's eight inches big. Uh, so if you design your own fabric, you can go there and print it, which is just kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's expensive. It's not so expensive. It's just like a normal, if you're purchasing a yard of fabric, but it's too expensive if you wanted to like resell that fabric. So it's, it's kind of, um, just for personal use really. And which is awesome. I use them, I use them all the time. And I mean, you know, the fabric is a different quality than 
you know, the high quality quilting fabric that gets screen printed and all that, but it's fun. It's just, you know, when you want to design something yourself um, for like a party or a wedding or a little banner or something, it's, it's perfect. And this is uh, some of that fabric. Um, so yeah, so I decided if I was going to make a quilt for all my embroideries, I wanted to, I wanted it to be out of my own fabric. I guess I'll just keep pinning, pinning these instead of basting them. And uh, so I designed my own fabric and printed it. And this is one of the patterns that I designed. So this is, this is from, this is like, I don't know, seven years old, this fabric maybe. Where'd the pin go right here? Okay. I'm finally using it for something, so that's good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this one actually never got in the collection. Uh, I did do a dot similar. Actually, that's part of my one of my new collections coming out. It's called Sprinkles, and it's a bunch of basics and it, uh, or a bunch of dot basics that look a lot like this. But this is more structured. Like these dots are more in in like a grid, uh, but they still look like kind of blobby and painted. Uh, in in my new collection, the Sprinkles collection. I'm gonna start not on that end. I'm gonna just start right here. In the Sprinkles collection, they're more kind of scattered compared to this. And I don't think I have like a, a white background one. I think they're all, oh yeah, I do actually. There's one with a bunch of colorful dots that have a, has a white background, but then they're all really colorful. So that's kind of similar to these. I'm excited for those to come because it's a nice, it will be a nice basic to have just some fun dots. But yeah, so this guy never got made. He's just, uh, I just have uh, my stash here of Spoonflower version of it that I made a bajillion years ago. I just started along a straight edge because I thought it'd be an easier place to start versus starting right on right on a corner here. And this one looks like I have to deal with this, this uh, guy it doesn't look like he's tucked under very well. I might just snip it off. Um, I'll decide when I get there. But yeah, I'm pretty excited for that, that fabric. I have two kind of basic collections coming out with um, the Safari Suite collection. So the Safari Animals, which is the like a revamp of my first collection, which is where this is from, this fabric. Uh, it, or where I, you know, my original quilt design that I, that I did was, um, ended up being my first collection, but we didn't end up printing this one. But this, this next collection that I have coming out, I think probably October-ish, I think is when it starts shipping, October or November, somewhere along there. Um, but that one uh, has the, the two other collections coming with it that match it. So that's the sprinkles, which is, which is the little dots like this one. And then I have soft spot, which is uh, bigger dots, kind of like this size dot, but it's printed on a, like plush fuzzy fabric. So I I haven't seen what that looks like yet, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see that. And then all that will match match the safari fabric with all the cute little characters and stuff on. And I, I'm just excited for that fuzzy fabric because that would be like the perfect, yeah, it's kind of like a minky fabric. Um, I, I think, that's what I've heard. I haven't, I haven't felt it or seen it in person yet, but that's, that's, uh, so Minky is, it's a, I think it's by Robert Kaufman. I'm not positive, but it's just like a really plush, fuzzy, soft, you know, sink your fingers into tight fabric. And I think it'll be really cute as a backing. Like throw that, so you have a, like a little baby quilt with a really fuzzy backing and then like the cute little safari animals on the front. I'm kind of, that's my plan for it at least. Kind of excited to work with it. Oh, Shannon Fabrics. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. I think Shannon Fabrics is part of Robert Kaufman, though. I'm not positive on that, though. I might be wrong. Yeah. So they're the they're the people who make the the minky, which is fun. It's just fuzzy. It's kind of weird to work with because that fuzz gets everywhere 
But once you have a quilt made out of it, then it's just like the softest, fuzziest thing ever. But yeah, my mom got a kit with some of it in, and it had this little elephant applique on it, and that, uh, I think we prepped the pieces for the applique, and it's just the fuzzy stuff went everywhere. But yeah, so that's when I heard that, that this fabric, um, my fabric with the, the soft spot, um, I've heard it's like that, but I haven't seen it yet for sure. What program do you use to make patterns? Um, I use, I use the, all, I mean, I use Adobe products. So I use uh, Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. Uh, lately, I've been only using Photoshop. Oh, you don't have to do much cuttings. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, for quilt backs. For quilt backs, yeah, you just have the four cuts and then you're done. So I design in Photoshop, but what I've been doing, oh, washing it first helps with the shedding. Oh, okay, well that's good. I'll take that advice once, once I get it in. But yeah, so I design primarily in Photoshop now for most of my collections. Um, and I typically paint, I paint like black blobs of the shapes of my characters and stuff and all the little pieces. Actually, it's a whole, it's actually really funny because it's a whole lot like this. So I'll paint, uh, if I wanted to do, make this bunny, I would, uh, I paint this black as a black blob. And the reason I'm painting it instead of drawing it in Illustrator or something like that is because I want like really fun painted loose edges. And uh, so it has a painted look to it. I'm just kind of digging that. But this is how I would do it. I would paint this shape and then I would paint this as a black blob and I would paint this as a black blob and this is a black blob. And then I bring those, I, I just take a photo of those blobs and bring them into Photoshop. And then I'd take this black blob and I'd make it a color. I would like color it blue, you know, like this. And then I would take this black blob and color it navy. And then I would just lay that black blob on top of the blue blob. And that's kind of how I construct construct my um, my characters. Lately, at least, I've been kind of liking liking that style. So that's that's what I've been doing for. For my designs. All right, I just the stitch is a little tough. There's a little folded edge over, so I'm just trying to grab that. Oh, <laughs> it's fun, but I mean, like you know, a lot of people design in, in Illustrator. Yeah, I mean, it takes time, but that's that's um, it's just kind of like a little puzzle, but. You know, that's kind of the look I like. Yeah, so it's just kind of fun. And and why I do it that way, too, is that it, it's easier for me to change colors later, like when the manufacturer comes back and, and they're like, oh, can you make that blue instead of red? And then I can do that easier. And I just like the look. It's just this fun, weird, blobby, edged look. Yeah, so the new block came out, but I just decided to, um, I'll leave that for for tomorrow anyway, just in case someone doesn't know it's out yet and I didn't want to be working on it yet if someone was waiting for me to work on it on Sunday. And I'm, I wasn't in the mood for getting the whole machine out and cutting pieces. Yep, I have a, I have a graphic design degree. That's, that's kind of where my, my base is. But I, um, in school I did a lot of, I did some illustration and, and I like, I like just taking everything. So I, I did furniture design and stuff in school and I did some animation in school. Um, so I did do graphic design for a short period of time after, after school. And I, you know, I, I'm still doing graphic design. Like I helped John with uh, graphic design and web design and, and all that stuff and motion, like, like animation, like stop motion or not stop motion, um, motion graphics stuff. Uh, so like, you know, like on commercials when type comes in and, and images and, and all that. So I help with that. So I still do use my design stuff, but, um, I did, 
a few years after graduating, I, I worked at a greeting card company. So I was doing illustrations and stuff for that. And then after that, I just started doing Penguin and Fish. Penguin and Fish and then helping uh, John with his company stuff. Can you ever think you'd be doing... Well, not specifically. I didn't think I would be doing this, but I definitely, I mean, I don't know. I basically needed to be in some sort of art-related career. I, I just don't know what else I would have done. And I get, I, um, I, uh, I'm really lucky for sure. Like I'm, I'm really happy that I can, you know, be working for myself and, and, um, and then also with John, like helping, helping, um, he does design and, and, uh, he works over here too. So, uh, on, on his stuff. So I'm really happy that I can be helping him and, and we can just be doing that stuff. Cause I don't know. I, I never, I never fared well at, uh, in the corporate environment. Like I just, I, I, I get, I, just it really burned me out. I, I couldn't stay the state that place is very long. Um, so I worked at a few different places and then you know freelance worked better for me and and this works the best so far so I'd like to keep doing this and I'm I'm really liking actually all these like periscopes and video and all that. I'd like to do more of more of that so we'll see. But no I I I'm really happy to be able to do the fabric and that sort of thing. And just, you know, make the embroidery patterns and be able to make my own characters and stuff. I mean, that's, that's a really big deal for me. All right, this needs to be tucked in. I think I might just cut it off though. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just cut it. Oh, that's really sweet. I appreciate that. I mean, I feel the same way. All right, so I just totally cut off that point. And I think that's perfectly fine. That's how it's gonna get done tonight. Ah, can't pick up my needle. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving doing these things and I wanna do more, like I wanna, um, I've been talking about it a little bit more. I'd like to do, I talked about this a little bit the other night, but I'd like to do something like this you know how we're stitching the splendid sampler every night i'd like to do this with my abc animal collections um i don't know if you guys are familiar with my it's basically my main embroidery collection of, of patterns it's i have the the whole alphabet of animals and i want to do that like stitch the whole entire alphabet here um and record the videos and stuff for it so I'm, I'm trying to make a plan of how I can do that, like how we're doing these on, on Periscope, maybe like an hour earlier or something. Right, I'm going to try and grab around this little piece that I cut off. Yeah, I think it'd be neat because, um, you know, I, I want to do some videos of just the stitches, uh, just, just so if you want to learn the stitches that I'm using, you can just quickly watch like a you know, one minute video or less and just, uh, a uh, stitch along. Yeah. And, um, just get that, um, get the technique of like, Oh, how do I do satin stitch? Like I can just show you really quick in a short video, but then I thought it'd be fun to complement that with like being able to stitch, we can stitch the whole thing together. You know what I mean? Like from beginning to from A to Z <laughs> and just do the whole, the whole bit. And I actually have a, a quilt pattern that I designed. I just haven't made the final quilt for the for the cover yet. Uh, that uses the whole alphabet, and I think it's pretty cute. We've made it once before. It's the quilt that we originally made for our first trade show when I just finished all the designs that I that I made this fabric for. So like the way back where it started the whole it started the whole thing, right? Started my career in this direction basically was uh, that that quilt. So I, I finally wrote it up into a pattern. I just need to take, um, take a nice final photo of it. But yeah, I thought we could stitch all of the, all of the pieces, all of the animals, and then maybe even sew it up into that quilt, like have it be a, a thing. Like a fun little, almost like a long course that we take and stitch along that we 
that we do. I thought that'd be kind of neat. Aw, look how puffy this is. I, I, I really like this. Fun little, I forgot I had these weird yellow, yellow flowers, le yellow leaves. All right, I just have to tie the back under this one. And we got a few minutes left. I'll try and we'll start another little bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm playing with that idea. Um, that's nice to hear that you guys would be interested in something like that. It's, it's hard to know, you know what I mean? Like when you're working at home here and you just are coming up with ideas that like, oh, I wonder if this would be a thing. Um, it's nice to know that you guys think it'd be okay to do something like that. <sighs> so yeah, if I, if I do do that, uh, you'll be hearing more about it, I'm sure. Once I start uh, figuring stuff out for it and, and how, how it would pan out. Well, I did not do a very good job with that knot. I think we're just going to leave it. Anything to learn. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like, I just love learning new things. And, and this in this fashion, you'd be able to, you know, it'd be on Periscope, um, at, least, at least beforehand. I might save the videos so that people can have them later um, to stitch along. But at least the first time through, I mean, you, you know, you could ask questions and I would have, um, I, I'd do those other videos for the stitches and, I don't know, like a whole planned out thing. Where people can learn and, you know, each, each one of those alphabet patterns uses uh, at, at least two stitches. So it's great for beginners. Would you send a notification? Yes. So um, if you're not on my newsletter, I would definitely get on that just because I'll most likely, if I do something like that, I mean, right now I'm just straight up in the just thinking about it stage, but um, that would be the first, that, that, well, you know, actually, you know, right here's the first place that I'm talking about it really, but um, that's where I would talk about it a little bit more in my newsletter if I, you know, end up doing it. And then, uh, um, if I do end up doing it on Periscope like this, which, you know, I kind of like, then it would probably, I would probably have some sort of sign up and then it would probably be a private Periscope. I don't know. Ultimately, maybe it would be that, but maybe for the first time we stitch through it, maybe I'll just do it like this. And uh, then, uh, yeah, somebody in the UPOs. Yeah, and then, uh, then it would be, um, you would get a notification. I would send out an email beforehand for sure. And then I would, um, you'd get a notification on your phone or whatever, kind of how, how these work. But yeah, so I'm not quite sure how I want to do it yet. Like, um, the first time through, we might just do it. And then I might add it to one of my products, uh, for the whole alphabet and then have like all the, the free stuff. What you're talking about after, I'm, I'm not sure. It'll probably end up being after the Splendid Sampler, just because, I don't know, that's how long things end up taking always. Um, but it won't be, I mean, if it is at the same time, it would be, you know, like an hour earlier or something. I don't know. We figure it out. And, you know, I would um, find out, you know, what be works best for you guys, too. I, you guys are a great group, and I like uh, listening to what you have to say, and so if we would figure out a way to make it work and, and totally just starting to think about it now, but I, I do like the idea of it. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people ask about certain stitches and, and I, I really love this process that we've been doing with the Splendid Sampler of just being able to make it together, like sooner than later. Okay. That's good. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely been on my mind for, uh, a little bit. I'm just trying to figure out how to work it out. But I found a good example of, of someone today who's doing a quilt along that I think would be kind of in a similar vein. So I'm trying to learn from, from them on how to do like a little class or whatever. But I like the idea of doing it on Periscope like this because um, this seems to be working and I don't know. We'll see. Oh, through the winter. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, it would definitely not be earlier than that, probably. Between Spanish effort 
and 100 blocks, 100 days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, it would be after that 100 days thing for sure. <laughs> that 100 days thing is looking pretty cute though. Um, I'm not participating in that one, but uh, everyone's blocks. That's the Tula Pink book, right? The Tula Pink uh, 100 blocks book. Um, I'm looking at people's blocks on Instagram and stuff, and they're looking just so sweet. You know, in theory, I probably should have um, probably, probably should have done a different color thread for this one. But I kind of like that you can see the stitches too. And you know what? I might actually just... Oh, you know what? I, I'm just going to finish this guy. So we're like late again, but I kind of just want to finish this leaf. Or at least finish this thread, whichever comes first, before, before stopping the night. Um, so it's... A little later again tonight. <laughs> I had all my naps today, so now I'm, I'm ready to wake up and get some work done. But yeah, I kind of, I was just going to stop in the middle of, of this leaf. Uh, but now I'm just like, I want to just get it done. Oh, but it feels good to finally have something stitched on this bunny, that's for sure. It was just yelling at me in my binder, like, why aren't you working on me? It's funny, this, this particular leaf, after I um, did all the starching and all that, it, it's quite a bit different than, than the, the template. Like the template swoops up at an angle like that. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's getting a little focused. Yeah. So my leaf kind of ends here in the, in the sketch of it, it goes up there. So I don't know. Something in the making of this leaf, the shape got funny, but oh well. Yeah, I think she did a quilt along for the 100 blocks when the book came out, but... Oh, but she's not running it, he said. Yeah, I, I don't... I didn't... I didn't see any info on it beforehand. And I couldn't take on another project like that either. I can only do, like, one of these big projects at a time. Um, but uh, it's fun to look at other people's blocks and what they're working on. This is actually, I think, probably the biggest project I've, I've ever done, the, the Splendid Sampler. I'm, I don't typically lean towards big projects like this, and when I do, I only do, like, one at a time, uh, for sure. I, I like, I actually do like having a big project in play, but I always pepper lots of little projects with the big project, um, and I really have to break down the big project so it's like lots of little parts so I feel like I can get a win for each of those parts. That's why this block project is so nice because we get a little win with each each block. But if I were to just tackle this as a whole quilt and think, okay, I'm making all these blocks and making this quilt, uh, I would get pretty overwhelmed. So breaking it up, um, I, I need to break up all my big projects with, with smaller things usually. So yeah, if I did this in a whole nother big project, that would be really tough for me. I've had the fabric and book already. Oh, cool! Cut your week's blocks on Monday. Yes, one step on the weekend. That sounds like a plan. All right, we're almost done. I just gotta get to the tip and, and come back up a little bit. I actually might run, off, run out of uh, thread before I get all the way around here. Or it might actually be perfect. That would be ideal, <laughs> obviously. I've been watching all the, I just said obviously, which kind of made me laugh to myself because I, I've been watching um, the Sherlock Holmes, or the Sherlock show, that uh, BBC show, on, um, it's on Netflix, so I've been watching that and, and Sherlock says obviously a lot. <laughs> like when he says, he just says something that is like too smart for everyone else to figure out and he's like, oh, you mean this? He's like, obviously. <laughs> so... Uh, I, uh, I laugh at the word whenever I hear obviously now, because I just think obviously, obviously. You have to, you have to say it in your actor voice, <laughs> which is, uh, we call it the actor voice when, when, uh, my husband and I watch movies, when, uh, and he, Sherlock, uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, as the perfect 
actor voice. It's that deep actor voice where he has to say every syllable and, you know, all that. So, like, it's that, obviously. <laughs> sort of. That's actor voice. <laughs> But yeah, he's got a good actor voice. It's just so funny though, like, if you watch any TV show or any movie and you just think actor voice, every single actor, you know, tries to do that actor voice and it gets a comical at, at some point. Uh, just everyone with the, like, deep, I'm an actor and this is me acting is just kind of funny. voice. But that guy's got a good one, that's for sure. Alright, here's this little tip, and I'm gonna go down first because it's, it's pretty thick on the end there, and I didn't think I could stab it right. Oh, you married an actor! I hear actor voice. All oh, actor voices, that's funny. <laughs> that's totally funny. So you know about actor voice! I'm not totally making that up, I don't think. Actor voice. Ah, makes me laugh when I watch things and hear that. Here's an awesome Stallone short thinker. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> ah, that's cool. I'm just trying to get around this funny point. This is another one of those points with one of those little edges popping through. I'm just trying to do this in a way that it tucks in the edge. Just a hair. There we go. Two more stitches! <laughs> He's a trip. That's funny. Well, at least you're entertained. That's good. Alright, I think maybe three more stitches. I'm, I'm making these bigger stitches on the on the straightaway, which is kind of nice. Yep, one more and we'll be done. I have enough, plenty of thread. Do you think this is easier than needle turn? Um, well, I mean technically this is kind of needle turn, but uh, at this point, once all my pieces are completely prepped, oh, she likes to do accents. That's cute. Um, once these are prepped, like, once it's at, at this stage, like, at this stage, I love it. At this stage, this way is awesome, and I super prefer this way. But, again, it's at this stage. There was a lot to get here, whereas with needle turn, you could just hop right in right away, which is kind of awesome. And I think with, with the needle turn, where I'm flipping it under as I go, I have a hunch that doing that enough I'd get used to that and um, be fine doing it that way, but this is pretty awesome to just be able to stitch these on, I do have to say. Like I would do it again. So let's let's uh, tie, tie in this edge. I, I would do it again this way just um, because of this part of it is just so slick. But man, it was a lot of prep. Like if I was, if I knew I was going on a trip or something, I would have just grabbed the fabric and 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 left, and you know, traced my pieces and cut them out and, and done it just the normal needle turn way, maybe. Um, and I'm I'm a little afraid, like if I ever got these pieces wet on accident, like before I stitch them down, then they would all kind of they it would lose that that edge. The seam allowance would just unfold itself. So that freaks me out a little bit. So I like that this is protected in my, you know, binder when I'm not working on it. But man, it is pretty dang slick to just be able to stitch these guys on um, without having to fold them under or anything. So, I mean, I'm liking it now, that's for sure. But yeah, I don't know. There's definitely a trade-off. Oh, she is a method that's different. I'll have to look that up to uh, and that's what's so neat about all this is that there's so many ways of doing something and and you just try them all until you get one that's like oh this totally clicks with me I'm gonna do it this way from now on or you know like sometimes 
you know, I chose this one to do today because these pieces were all prepped and it would be easier than the needle turn, but um, a different day I'd probably choose the other needle turn that we've been working on just uh, because I didn't want to prep all these pieces. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of what you're feeling. So, all right, we got all basically our under pieces done here. I just kind of want to set it up again. Where's my green piece? Oh, my pieces are just like traveling. I think it's attached to me or something. Um, I don't know, somewhere I have a green piece here for the crown. Oh, see, this is why I got to keep them in my binder just so I don't lose anything. So here's the bunny. He has a little hand here. Um, this is a tail. And, oh, we don't need him yet. This guy is the coat. Oh, actually, this goes on after. This guy's stitched on already. Coat. Collar. Like, there's so many pieces of little collar. And here is the little sleeve in hand and somewhere this evening while I've been sitting here my grass has walked away <laughs> and apparently oh here's the here's the foot and then we have that uh, piece of grass which like I said has disappeared it's probably <laughs> like it's totally not here anymore <laughs> So I'll have to find that before I put this all away again. But yeah, so next, the next part we would stitch on would be the grass uh, because all these other pieces sit on top of it. I know, I was looking at the floor, but I don't see it on the floor, so I don't, I don't know where it went. I'll find it though, but yeah, so the next, next part would be grass, and then after the grass, I think we'd, uh, it's gonna be hard to, I was gonna say we would do these pieces next, but it's gonna be hard once we cover up our template to see where those go. So I might actually stitch the bunny body down until I reach these spots. And then I might just stitch these down at the same time while I'm stitching stitching the bunny body. That's that's probably the plan. So that's that's next. Ground and that, but you know. Uh, we'll see once we get another free day because uh, tomorrow is new block day, but check it out I did actually sew something on the bunny finally and that makes me super duper happy <laughs> It has been a long time for this one So I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening and I'll find the grass wherever it went Hey there guys, let me show you it here we go. So they, those were itty bitty pieces that we just stitched on, but oh, I feel like I did something tonight. <laughs> so soon we'll get this guy done too. This, this one feels so much closer to finish than me. I know they're tiny. Like look how small this little hand is. That was the thing. That was what was really difficult too when we were doing that whole, um, you know, the whole, uh, the freezer paper thing to just get around those tiny little edges that was kind of tough but we did it and uh, I'm happy with it I'm pretty dang excited that we worked on this and uh, I'm excited for a new block tomorrow I checked out the block already it's really cute I think it's gonna be fun to do uh, I think it might be quick too as far as piecing goes so I'm excited so I will see you guys tomorrow this will go up on YouTube at penguin and fish movies in uh, you know it'll be up by tomorrow morning I'll get that up tonight and I'll start, I'll get uh, the, I'm, I'm working on getting the older blocks up as well. And I think I'm on night two of block number two. We'll go up tonight as well. <laughs> so I, I'm going to get the older videos up until I get caught up on that too. I'll, I'm going to put one up a night uh, just because it takes some time to do yet. So I think I can only handle like one a night to actually get it done. <laughs> so that's, that's the plan with that. So, all right guys, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your weekend. And uh, yeah, have a great Sunday. Good night.